Hi, everyone. We are still waiting for people to join. So we are going to wait just a couple more minutes before getting started. Hi everyone, we're just going to wait one more minute um, as people are, looks like people are still joining. Um, if you could do me a favor and um, let me know that you can hear me, there's a questions uh, module on the GoToWebinar uh, panel. So if you could just let me know you can hear me, that would be awesome. Um, and we'll get started in just another minute. Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to the second Give Local Piedmont training webinar. My name is Dawn and I'll be leading you through today's presentation. Um, I have a few, a few housekeeping items to note before jumping in. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that um, today's webinar will be recorded and it will be posted in the toolkit on the Give Local Piedmont site under the resources tab. Um, and then at any time, you can use uh, the GoToWebinar chat module to send across questions, and we will get to as many as we can after the webinar. Um, I also have Dee Dee uh, with me today from the Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. Um, she has been working extra, extra hard uh, to make sure that this Giving Day is great for you all this year. Um, I see her there, and I'm hoping that um, she has audio. So, Dee Dee. Um, thank you and welcome. Thank you, Dawn, and I am here, and I think everybody on this call will understand when I say, uh, I am um, very happy to say that I have a new laptop. Um, it's refurbished, but it's new to me. And awesome. so when I went to get on the call, guess what? I didn't have the software, so I had to download, go to webinar, and I watched as the clock ticked away and it was going one megabyte at a time. But finally, we did it, we're here, I'm here, and I'm happy to be here. Um, uh, Dawn, this is Dawn's second year working with us, and uh, we we couldn't be happier with uh, the relationship with Mighty Cause, uh, particularly in support of fundraising. Uh, that's just been um, a wonderful experience. 
Dawn, I pass the torch. Beautiful. Um, thank you, Didi. Uh, we also are really excited to um, partner with you all again for this year. Uh, and always, as always, we look forward to providing technical support to everyone as you all gear up for the big day. Um, so if you do have any questions as you're getting ready, or you know, if one of your supporters, board members has a question, um, whomever, our support team is here to help you. Uh, you can reach them at support at mightycause.com. Um, just a little bit of background on us. Uh, Mighty Cause is a fully functional nonprofit fundraising suite that organizations can use 365 days a year to raise money for their causes. Uh, we've been around since 2006, and we're actually one of the first platforms to host Giving Days. So, you know, we've been doing this kind of event for a really long time, and uh, we are just super excited to host Give Local Piedmont again this year with uh, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. Um, and I, you know, am excited to be there at kickoff. So, okay. So here's a look at today's agenda. Um, we will be going over some of the basics. Um, then we're going to be walking through the prizes available during this year's Giving Day. After that, we'll go over some strategies to raise funds and, and win some of those prizes. And then we'll review the Give Local Piedmont offline um, donation uh, policy. And then um, we're going to do a Q&A session at the very end of the presentation. So if you have any questions at all while I'm presenting, just type into that questions box um, of your GoToWebinar panel, and we'll make some time for it at the end. So going over the Give Local Piedmont basics. Uh, Give Local Piedmont is going to be on May 4th this year. It is a 24-hour giving day that runs from midnight to midnight. Early giving starts on April 20th. Um, it's organized by the Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. Um, one of the really awesome and exciting things about um, this giving event is that there's lots and lots of prize money at stake and lots of opportunities to win. Um, we'll be going over prizes in detail a little bit later on, but you can view the prizes currently available um, in the toolkit on the Give Local Piedmont uh, website. As long as everybody knows where that is. Yes. Yeah. Give local Piedmont. <laughs> so first things first, um, if you haven't done so yet, you're going to need to register your organization for Give Local Piedmont. Um, registration is a two-step process. Step one is going to givelocalpiedmont.org and filling out the registration form. Um, you'll need to either log into Mighty Cause or sign up for an account on Mighty Cause to view that registration form. Um, once you complete the registration form online, you'll receive another email confirming that we've received it um, that will also detail step two that you'll need to do to complete registration. Um, and at this time, you'll also be able to add uh, additional administrators to your organization's account on Mighty Cause. Um, so multiple people can access um, the account and help run your campaign. So step two is filling out your organization's to-do list, which is located within the overview section on your um, nonprofit dashboard. Um, once you complete registration by finishing both steps, then you'll receive an email confirming that you're approved and everything's all set. Um, one really important thing to note that I mentioned on the last webinar as well, um, is that if you participated in Give Local Piedmont last year, your to-do list is already complete. Um, you only have to do that to-do list one time. So for this year, all those organizations need to do, um, those organizations that participated last year, all you need to do is fill out the registration form on the Give Local Piedmont site and then wait for um, uh, our team to review the submission um, and get your approval email. Um, so again, if you participated last year, then your to-do list is already going to be complete, so you won't have to do that part of registration. Um, and one thing I do want to note, if you're not sure if you've completed registration or not, or, you know, if you're not sure if you're, uh, you know, you've completed both steps, you can always go into your uh, account, go to givelocalpiedmont.org. Um, and uh, log in, and then um, you'll be bumped to your overview screen where it will it will give you your status uh, for the registration for this year's giving day. Um, if you're pending, that means you still need to complete step two. If you're approved, then that means that you can uh, you know celebrate, eat some cake, do a little dance, you're all set and good to go. 
Um, and it, of course, if you have any questions at all about whether or not you're registered, uh, what you need to do to complete registration, please uh, email our support team at support at mightycause.com. Once you're also free to, for those of you that uh, were involved last year, please know that you're of course free to update, edit your pages uh, right up to the right up to the uh, uh, deadline. We'd prefer if the edits were done by the deadline, which is April 16th. Uh, but I believe, Don, if I'm not mistaken, you can continue to edit pages right up to the day. Yeah, you can edit them at any time um and even on the day so if you wanted you know if you were super duper gung-ho and wanted to keep your page like vibrant really, yeah then you know you can add to your story you can change your pictures around um you can edit things at any time uh okay so navigating your dashboard um so once you filled out and submitted your registration form for um step one of the registration process um, if you had not completed uh, or not competed uh, before, then you'll need to complete the items on your to-do list to uh, complete step two. So this list is located in the overview section um, on your nonprofit profile. Uh, and it's um, there's a little line underneath it says organization, um, overview, and then it says to-do list. You can click on that and access this to-do list that you see on the screen right here. Uh, there's four basic items for Give Local Piedmont that you'll need to complete. Um, you'll need to add a background image to your page. Uh, you can use one from our gallery of stock background images. Um, you'll also need to upload your logo. Uh, that's going to represent you throughout Give Local Piedmont. You're going to want to add a story um, that, you know, also we call it a description. It's going to tell visitors to your profile about what your nonprofit organization does. And then you'll also want to build a thank you page that donors will see once their donation transaction is completed. Um, so if you click the link, uh, you'll see on the to-do list uh, uh, screenshot here that um, you know it says primary logo, background image, all of those are underlined. If you click on those um, links, then you'll be taken right in the spot on your profile where you can complete that task. So it's super easy uh, for you to complete the list. Um, again, though, if you need help or you're not sure how to complete any of the items, um, let us know uh, at, you can email us at support at mightycause.com. We also have an extensive support library um, where we have walkthroughs and videos, et cetera. Um, there is a contact us um, menu item on givelocalpiedmont.org that lists out the different ways that you can get help uh, for Give Local Piedmont. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can contact us um, and those are all listed there as well. And while it's not a to-do item, you'll see that item number five on the to-do list is to set up your electronic funds transfer. Uh, we leave that up to you. Most of our organizations last year did in fact choose to have their final checks dispersed through elect through EFT, uh, which, which made it quick and easy. And there was the money about, I'd say, I wanna say two to three weeks after the event was finalized. Um, so I think before the end of May, in fact, people had money in their bank accounts, uh, but you may also opt not to do that and a live check will be produced and a live check will be mailed to you. Yes. And to uh, piggyback off that a little bit, um, if you do choose to sign up for um, EFT or direct deposit, uh, you get your funds sent. Uh, we send funds twice a month. Um, around the 10th and around the 25th. So since Give Local Piedmont is on the 4th, you'll receive all your funds raised uh, around the 25th if you sign up for direct deposit. Um, checks are dispersed once a month around the 10th. So for Give Local Piedmont, those funds would be dispersed uh, May, June, in, around June 10th. Um, and they'll be sent to the um, uh, address that your organization has on file with the IRS. Um, and again, if you choose check, uh, there's no action you need to take on your part. Um, I will say there is a $5 admin fee to disperse um, and handle the check cutting and things like that. There are no additional um, admin fees uh, for direct deposit. So we always recommend direct deposit just because you get your money uh, faster and um, there's no fees associated with dispersing those funds. Um, but again, totally up to you uh, and what works best for your organization. Um, so continuing on this, um, I want to recommend taking some time to get to know your dashboard. 
Um, the dashboard is the admin section that appears on the left side of, left side of the screen um, when you're logged in and on your nonprofit's uh, profile. So um, when you log in, you'll automatically land in your overview section, um, which you'll see that's the very first item at the top of the uh, dashboard list of um, sections. Uh, the overview section is where you'll find your to-do list as well as some metrics for your nonprofit. You do have the ability to customize those metrics. Um, and when I say metrics, I'm, think, I'm um, talking about like dollars raised during a certain time period, number of donors, um, uh, amount raised over time, year over year metrics. So lots of fun, um, well, you know, whatever your definition of fun is, interesting maybe, um, uh, uh, numbers for your organization to play off of so that you can know where uh, your nonprofit stands um, in terms of your online fundraising, um, you know, uh, dollars raised, things like that. So definitely take the time to check it out, customize it to what, you know, you want to know. Um, let's see. So then um, you can customize your organization page um, by, uh, you'll see the organization page is the second item listed in the dashboard. Um, so on here, this is going to be the public facing view of your page. Um, and you can edit it by um, toggling on edit mode. Um, you can, in, on your organization page, you can include things like page metrics, like adding a goal, um, which will enable a progress bar. Um, uh, the next section within the fundraising tools section on your dashboard, um, this is where you'll find matching grants, um, and which we're going to talk about uh, a little bit later on. Um, and then below that on your dashboard is a report. Um, where you'll be able to preview and export different uh, donation reports. Um, and then underneath that is your checkout section, which we'll also be going into a little bit more um, in detail. Uh, this is where you can customize your donation flow, uh, the thank you page, and the receipt that your donors get. Um, and then the last item um, that pertains to all of you is the settings. Uh, you can manage you know, your nonprofit settings with URL customization and adding um, uh, admins uh, within that setting section on your dashboard. Customizing your profile. So jumping into your overall profile for Give Local Piedmont, um, your profile is the face of your nonprofit for the giving day. So you'll wanna make sure that it looks good and it represents you well. Um, your profile link is uh, the link that you'll wanna share with your supporters to ask them to donate to your Give Local Piedmont page. Um, so to share your page, you just copy and paste the URL um, into an email uh, on your organization profile uh, while you're editing it. There is a nice little feature that says, you know, profile link. So it's super easy to see, oh, here's the link that I should be sharing um, to everyone in uh, everything that I'm sending. So copy and paste that URL into an email, a social post, wherever you're advertising the campaign. Um, so as you're going through through your to-do list, um, you'll want to customize your profile to match your brand for your nonprofit. Um, you can change your theme, um, color to match your logo. You can upload media to your gallery. Um, you know, that obviously adds some visual interest to your page. Uh, you can add a story or description. Um, that's going to be like the centerpiece of your page. Uh, in that story, uh, you know, one good place to start is just putting your mission statement. Um, and then obviously, you know, if you have additional uh, information that you want your donors to know, you can add that there as well. Um, you can also add photos and videos. Um, just quick note, you'll need to upload the video to YouTube or Vimeo first. Um, but once you do that, you can embed it in your story so people can watch it right there on your profile page. Um, the story section this spot is really where you can go in depth about your work and just make a really strong appeal to donors. You know, tell them why your organization uh, needs their support, show the impact of your work. Um, so just spend time customizing this profile. Um, just the more work that you put into it, um, your, your donors are going to notice that. And um, like Dee Dee mentioned, um, you know, a little bit ago, if you participated last year, take the time to check out your profile, make sure that it's up to date, um, update anything that you want to, add a new goal, um, reset your page metrics, um, you know, uh, so that it, you know, counts the funds from early giving, which is April 2nd, through the giving day. Um, that way, you know, your page is fresh and ready for donors to come um, once you start promoting it to them uh, for Give Local Piedmont. 
And um, please, please know that if this sounds a little like Greek to you, that that is exactly what support at mightycause.com is there to assist you. We found that most mo that a number of the stumbles last year were in uploading, uh, uploading photos, uploading videos. You couldn't quite get it to fit. You didn't, you know, it wasn't sized right. Uh, that's one of the more challenging. It's it's an easy process, but it's challenging to get it. Uh, with the look and feel that you want. And that's what support at mightycause.com is there to help you with. Yep. We are happy to help resize pictures. Um, we can, you know, if you want to know specs, um, which the logo spot specifically on your profile page, um, you should be able to use whatever logo you already have for, you know, if you have a Facebook page um, or a Twitter profile, um, that is the same size as those logos. So you should be able to to reuse your logo um, that you already have uh, there. But again, you know, we're here to help. If it essentially if it takes you longer than 30 seconds to do it, shoot us an email <laughs> and let us know. Don says 30 seconds. I say 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes. Whatever, you know, basically we don't want we don't want you to say, I wasted half my day doing this. If that's right. You know, not that's not what we're going for you know we uh designed the site to um be as easy as possible so if it you know starts getting into the not easy uh you know <laughs> idea for you then please send us an email and let us know what issue you're having and we will be more than happy to help <laughs> uh checkout flow so um the next item that you'll really want to customize and i promise we'll get to strategies here soon um but just some of the, I want. I really wanted to touch on some of the things that you definitely want to take a look at prior to um, early giving opening and checkout flow is one of them. Um, checkout flow is gonna be located under the report section uh, on your dashboard. Um, the checkout flow is what your donors experience when they make a donation um, towards your organization. So the first thing that you'll wanna customize is your donation form. Um, everything is, we, we actually just recently updated um, this portion. So if you visited the site, you know, within the last week, um, we just updated this. Um, it's very exciting, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so with the donation form, everything's on page editing now. So when you go in there, you can see exactly what your donation form is going to look like um, to your donors. You can add um multiple uh you know suggested donation um numbers so you know you can add as many as you want um which you know we recommend four but if you have more than that um then that's that's great um you can add uh donation descriptions um you can add um you know additional information that you'd like to connect uh collect from your donors so there's lots of different things you can do with your donation form um, you know, our our recommendation is always to keep it as simple as possible because, um, you know, the more donors have to fill out during the donation process, the higher their, um, you know, escape rate is, if you will. So uh, try and keep it as simple as possible, but you'll definitely want to uh, review your donation form at the very least to make sure that it represents um, you, uh, you know, and what you know your donors give uh, best. So make sure you take the time to, um, uh, check that out. Uh, next, you'll want to focus on the thank you page. So once your donor can, completes their transaction, uh, they'll be automatically redirected to the thank you page that you have the ability to customize. Um, you can add uh, photos to that thank you page. You can add a thank you video that you you know create ahead of time. Um, you can create one specifically for uh, you know, give local Piedmont. Um, it also allows you to create a customizable button um, with a call to action and link. So, you know, if you wanted, if, if you had somewhere you wanted to send people after they gave to give local Piedmont, um, then you can add that call to action there. Uh, you know, some people like to send donors back to their uh, main websites. Um, others like to send them to their, you know, uh, Facebook pages. Um, but that button is totally for you and totally customizable. Um, so you can add whatever you want there. And if you don't need a button, then you just don't customize it and it won't show up. Uh, the next thing, um, you'll see donation receipt. So you do have the ability to customize that donation receipt. Um, you can customize the top part of it. Uh, 
the bottom part that your donors receive um, will include all of the uh, tax deductible information that they'll need uh, to take to their tax professionals. Um, but you have the ability to uh, uh, edit and customize that top part. So we really try and allow you to have um, pretty much complete control over your donation process. That way your donors know this is where my donation's going and your name is you know, scattered throughout that process the entire time. Um, you can always uh, preview that donation and thank you um, experience as well um, as you're going through it. So I highly recommend taking the time um, to really look through uh, that section, make sure it, it is uh, customized to the way that you want it um, and uh, you know, uh, a way that makes sense to your donors. We know that this process uh, works because we had over 50, I want to say 5,800 uh, individual donations made last year, and we maybe only receive seven or eight requests towards tax time for copies of receipts. So people are receiving their receipts, they have what they need, and clearly um, all is set for them for their tax for their tax year. Yep, and you know we. Obviously, you're welcome to send out your own um, receipts if, if you prefer to do that, but just know to, to help take the burden off of you, we do automatically send those tax deductible receipts. Um, and then, of course, you know, if a donor needs us to resend a receipt, um, you are able to resend receipts, but our support team can resend them too. So, you know, just let us know, we'll get them what they need. Um, so moving on um, from your dashboard, um, I want to make sure I mention the really great tools that you can use as you get ready for Give Local Piedmont. Um, and those are all within the um, nonprofit toolkit that we have available. Uh, the toolkit is located on the homepage for Give Local Piedmont. Um, just go to givelocalpiedmont.org, um, click on resources and choose the uh, NPO toolkit uh, from the sub menu that appears. Uh, the toolkit has tips and tricks, it's got FAQs, it's got walkthroughs, um, it's got a recording of our last webinar that we did. Um, it will house the recording for this webinar. Um, uh, it's got templates you can use for email and social media. Um, you know, this is uh, also where you'll be able to find um, uh, logos and branding items to download and use for your own messaging. So lots and lots of stuff available for you there um for you to check out so definitely take the time um and then if there's anything that you know you think would be helpful or you could you could um you could use then let us know we are happy to add to the toolkit because obviously you know if you are looking for something or thinking something will be there and it's not then chances are others might be as well so let us know if um there's anything that you think could be added and we'll be happy to um take a look at that Okay, so now on to the super exciting stuff, uh, prizes. So um, Give Local Piedmont is offering lots of prizes available uh, this year and more will be added um, in the coming months. Um, prizes are based on number of unique donors um, that uh, each organization has. So uh, make sure that you're planning on reaching out to everyone you know so that you can win a prize. Um, there will be one prize awarded per winner and offline donations and early donations um, will not count toward timed prizes. Um, as a reminder, early donations are any donation made during the early giving period from April 20th to the start of the giving day on May 4th. Um, and then timed prizes are going to be those prizes like the early bird challenge, power hours, golden tickets. So as you can see, um, they do, uh, we do have the early bird challenge again for everyone this year. Um, there are six power hours, there's eight golden tickets, um, the Grow the Grassroots prize is back, as well as Notable Newcomer, um, and uh, there are a few more prizes available that um, we will be uh, sending out information on, well, and when I say we, I mean Dee Dee, <laughs> sorry Dee Dee, um, <laughs> Dee Dee will be sending more information on, um, so make sure that you keep checking back on the prizes page, uh, keep checking your email, look out for emails from um, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation so that you're up to date on everything available and that way you can kind of adjust your strategies depending on the prizes that you want to go after um, for Give Local Piedmont. Um, and then just for a complete list, uh, you, they will be available on the Rules and Prizes tab. Everything that you see here uh, on this slide right now is uh, listed out. All the information about each of those prizes is listed out 
on the roles and prizes tab on givelocalpiedmont.org. Um, but for any of the prizes where it says information coming soon, then that's where we'll be putting that as well. So at any time, um, please go to that tab, review the rules, because um, this is just a summary. Um, so make sure you review the rules and check out all the prizes um, and kind of adjust your strategy from there. And then speaking of strategy, so um, we're going to talk through some of the different um, ways that you can take advantage of Give Local Piedmont, um, the prizes available, and then the things that you can do in terms of messaging to your donors to, to make the most of um, the giving day that Northern Piedmont Community Foundation is organizing for everyone. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is leaderboard strategy. Um, so the leaderboards for Give Local Piedmont um, provide you know, uh, some of the biggest prizes available. And the key to winning them is to get your donors invested in helping you um, climb that leaderboard. So again, we're going to have um, power hours. There's going to be a couple of the prizes available that will have leaderboards that you'll be able to see to track your progress. So uh, continually let your donors know um, where you stand. Uh, that way, you know, they know what's at stake um, and they know exactly what it takes to help you get there. So keep them posted throughout the day, um, you know, depending on what you're going after. Um, so that they understand, you know, what, what you're striving for. Um, and of course, tie everything back into your overall messaging about, you know, what you do, why you do it to really get people excited um, about helping you win uh, that prize money. Um, and then, you know, another thing you can do is, you know, concentrate on sustaining momentum, keeping the fundraising going and starting and finishing strong. Um, since Give Local Piedmont is a 24-hour event, uh, the trick is making the most of it um, by sustaining that fundraising momentum. So one great way to do that and make sure your campaign is on track is to set mini goals um, for your organization to really help generate buzz and build that excitement. Um, so you can set mini goals for certain hours of the day so you can get, um, you know, keep people excited about uh, not only the prizes available, but also, you know, your own goal that you set. Um, uh, for, you know, different hours of the day, different sections of the day, um, you know, uh, mini goals just really help sustain that fundraising momentum um, and get people excited. So, you know, to set those mini goals, you'll want to think about your overall fundraising goal for the day, um, what you'll need to raise or, you know, how many donors you'll need to get um, each hour or each section of the day. So, you know, and, you know, how many donors how many donor what donor goal do you have for the morning what donor goal for, do you have for the afternoon um kind of roughly uh you know map that out for yourself that way you can build that into your messaging um and you know have additional things to say to your donors to keep them engaged um throughout the day um as you're doing this be sure to keep in mind you know when your donors are most active um and kind of adjust those hourly or you know um section of the day goals accordingly. Um, if you know if you know that there are certain times of the day that are going to be slower for you, uh, you know, maybe you'll want to boost that time period by utilizing um, a matching grant that you secure um, to kind of shake up your campaign. Um, so, you know, think about, you know, when your donors are most active, when they're slow, and think about what kind of strategies that you want to use. Maybe you only want to target people when they're most active to really get the most out of it. Or maybe you want to target them when you know it's typically slow uh, for your organization. Um, and that way, you know, you can kind of boost that time period for you uh, during the day. So, uh, you know, take the time to sit through that. Think about what you want to, um, what you want to do and what will work best for you. Um, so that you're, you know, making the most of it. Something else that you can do to get your campaign rolling is asking for seed donations. Um, so seed donations are donations from people in your organization's inner circle that, you know, essentially break the ice with donors. Uh, so those seed donors help get the ball rolling. Um, and, you know, uh, people to ask for for seed donations um, would be your um, board members, staff, um, especially those who are directors, C-suite level leaders at your organization. Um, volunteers are a great group to ask to be seed donors. Um, really anyone at your organization who's highly engaged in your work. Um, these don't have to be huge donations. Uh, you know, if you ask every volunteer to give $10 right at the, um, you know, uh, start of Give Local Piedmont or um, during the early giving period, that would be super helpful to get a little bit in the bank. 
um, and help move your campaign forward once you that way once you go out to your larger support base you'll already have fun, funds raised and people can see that there's movement and engagement in your campaign and that others are also actively um, you know donating to the uh, your give local Piedmont campaign as well <clears throat> so a great strategy for driving donations uh, on a giving day is securing a matching grant um, a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your organization leverages to bring in other smaller donate donations um, by offering it up as a match. Um, so for instance, uh, if you had somebody willing to give you uh, $500, $1,000, um, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, you could use that money as a matching grant. So you'd take that $1,000 and you'd say to your supporters, hey, you know, between this hour and this hour, um, any donations we get to our, um, you know, Give Local Piedmont campaign will be matched up to $1,000, uh, which basically allows these other donors to double their donation. Um, so we have a tool specifically for um, setting up a matching grant, um, and you can do a lot within this tool. Uh, you can set a cap for donation matching, um, say, you know, $200, so someone doesn't come along and make a big donation and eat up your entire match. Um, you can set it to be a one-to-one -one match. You can queue matches. Um, it's a really cool and complex little tool that allows you to do a lot with your matching grant. Um, and on our platform, we've seen that matching grants, especially on a giving day, can be a really powerful way to drive donations. This is also another point to interject, support at mightycause.com. Um, yeah. it's, uh, this is where you really can use an assist, uh, and I highly recommend so that you set it up in exactly the way you want. If you find that the terms are not familiar to you when you open up how to create a matching grant, uh, please, please contact support at Mighty Cause. And, um, all of us at MPCF stand ready to talk to you about the concept of matching grants and how to go about securing one. Mighty Cause stands ready to show it on your page and how you can use it to build momentum and to uh, increase, hopefully, the donations for the day. Yes, and we do have a very um, uh, well laid out uh, support um, article, if you will, uh, all about setting up a matching grant. Um, it's got screenshots, it's got um, definitions. Uh, so if you're having trouble um, on the contact us page on um, is you will see the link to our um, support forum. If you go there, type in matching grant, you'll see some of the articles and information um, all about matching grants and setting them up, um, et cetera. So uh, that's a good place to start too. Um, that way, you know, you can kind of familiarize yourself um, as well. Yeah, and some of those links I, th I think also exist on our uh, toolkit page. And uh, some of those articles were sent on Monday with our weekly tip. So you mm -hmm. should have, you should be well armed and from any yeah. direction. Yeah, so um, as Didi mentioned, uh, you know, securing a matching grant in of itself. So, you know, the Northern Piedmont Community Foundation is, is ready to help um, you know assist you in talking through what you can do specifically to secure a matching grant um, I kind of want to talk about it like high level um, so obviously like a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation so you'll want to follow the same process as you would when you secure major gifts so prospect cultivate and ask you know people you should consider as prospects for a matching grant um, are board members uh, you know, obviously, first and foremost, um, sometimes an individual board member will be happy to provide a matching grant. Um, but one thing that you could also consider is, you know, asking your board to work together to provide a match. Um, so if your board still has to pay its dues, for instance, you could utilize their dues by turning um, the dues into a matching grant. Um, you know, or just ask each of your board members to um, commit $50, commit $100 to securing um, a matching grant for your Give Local Piedmont campaign. Um, yeah, major that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really yeah. is. You know, a lot of us have anywhere from eight to 15 board members and uh, 50 to $100 from each, and you've, you've got a match. You've got the mm -hmm. potential for a match. 
Yeah. Yep. So, and I mean, obviously a thousand dollars is going to go a long way and it's not going to cost one board member a thousand dollars. It's going to, you know, just if you have 10, for instance, um, it'll just, uh, you're just asking for a hundred, which is for some people, obviously much more doable than a thousand, but the thousand can go a long way in, you know, uh, getting additional donations uh, for your campaign for that day. Um, major gift donors uh, who have uh, given large donations to your organization in the past are also good prospects. Um, providing a matching grant uh, for them is it can be a fun way to let you know liven up their donations. So instead of just writing a check, um, they're helping your organization grow and drive other donations. Um, and then you can also give uh, the you know match sponsor some extra recognition when you're promoting the match. So you know major gift donors who like a little shout out. Um, are really great matching grant prospects. Uh, corporate sponsors are also good prospects. Um, it's a really fun, proactive way for corporate sponsors to get involved in a public way and you know really draw attention to their philanthropy. Um, so at this stage of the game, um, there's still a good amount of time before Give Local Piedmont. Um, so you can start making phone calls, setting up emails, really start cultivating these prospects by letting them know what you're doing uh, and just seeing how warm they might be to the idea of getting involved in this way. Um, and then in the coming weeks, you can you know, make your ask, shore up the details of the match. Um, you can, as I mentioned before, you can have more than one match running at the same time on Mighty Cause. So, you know, let's say you get a lot of great responses um, for matching grants. Um, don't feel like you have to pick and choose one. You can set up as many matching grants as you want um, on the giving day. You can queue them up, um, whatever, you know, it's super flexible. So, um, uh, yeah, so as you're, as you're working to secure and, um, you know, uh, figure out your matching grant, just know you can set up as many as um, you have available. So at the end of the day, oh, Didi, did you want to? Only to say that a subset of corporate sponsors, don't forget your vendors. Uh, some of you may spend a fair amount of money with one or two or three vendors. Uh, go to them, ask them if they would consider, uh, and you know, you have the relationship, the vendor relationship to refer back to um that's always helpful mm -hmm. um so at the end of the day uh, a matching grant is a marketing tool so in order to make the most of your matching grant you'll definitely want to promote it um so the first step is going to that matching grant tool on your give local piedmont profile um adding your match there um there are some marketing tools built into the platform for your matching grant um so when you add one and it's live the site automatically puts a little sticker on your donate button when the grant is active um and uh the match gets listed on your organization profile um you'll also want to add some information to your story especially if it's a big match um promote the matching grant on your social media channels um, send out an email, include it. If you have it set up ahead of time, include it on any um, you know, postcards or letters or newsletters you're sending out. Let all of your followers, supporters know about the match. Um, countdowns also add urgency. So you know, counting down and sharing your progress towards reaching that match can be a great way to get people excited um, and really urge them to stop what they're doing and make a donation to your nonprofit during Give Local Piedmont. Um, then I'm going to move through these um, slightly quickly um, since we only have about 15 minutes left and I want to make sure there's time for Q&A. Um, so moving on from matching grants, um, I want to touch a little bit on ambassadors. Um, so ambassadors are people who are um, usually in your in organization's inner circle who can help boost your campaign. Um, so ambassadors usually include like board members, volunteers, um, especially highly engaged volunteers, staff members, etc. Um, using ambassadors can help you kind of break out of your list of existing supporters and engage new people, um, people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. So an ambassador can help you in a, a few different ways. Um, an ambassador can simply share the link to your Give Local Piedmont page within their uh, social circle um, and ask them to donate. Uh, or if you have a board member, for instance, who's really well connected, this can be a really big boost uh, by having them share your organization's Give Local Piedmont page. Um, another way for ambassadors uh, to get involved um, is to uh, involve them in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, if that's something that you want to dip your toes into this year. 
Um, so peer to peer fundraising is a fundraising technique where you basically like deputize your supporters to fundraise on your behalf. <laughs> um, you can do that really easily on, you know, your give local PMAT page. It's totally optional. Um, but it is a great way to shake up your campaign and, and acquire new donors. Um, so if you wanted to try peer to peer, you could ask, you know, ambassadors uh, that um, to set up a fundraising page for your organization uh, for Give Local Piedmont. Um, asking, you know, supporters to set up a fundraiser might sound like a big ask, but it's often a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters and just kind of allow them to tell their own story about your organization, you know, how they came to work with you, why your work's important to them. Um, and doing this doesn't distract or draw attention away from your campaign because they're operating alongside your campaign. Um, and reaching out to people they know personally for donations. Um, so, you know, in most cases, their friends, family, colleagues, those are not people that your organization would typically have access to to solicit for donations. So in that peer to peer setup, you're actually picking up new donors most of the time, which is always awesome. Um, so, you know, for people like your board, volunteers, staff, uh, program alumni, this could be a really great, great way uh, to get them involved um, without just, you know, asking them to give money. Um, doing this and setting up a page um, can be super meaningful for them. Um, and we've seen the peer to peer fundraising have really big impact on giving days um, for, for nonprofits who um, uh, really took advantage of it. Um, and really quickly to, to make things easier for them, you can set up a fundraising template for them within your um, organization account. Um, that way, if you set up the template for them, all they have to do is, uh, you know, click the fundraise button on your profile. It prompts them to use your template. And then if you filled out, you know, pretty much everything, you can fill out a goal picture. Um, you can even fill out the story section if you want. And then all they have to do is, you know, click fundraise, you know, say, yes, I want to use the template, and then they're pretty much good to go. So it's, it allows them to set up their page really easily. And then they can obviously customize it from there if they have more time or if they want to. Um, and then from there, they can share with all of their friends and family as well for um, Give Local Piedmont. Um, so another item um, that is, you know, you can use for Give Local Piedmont is team fundraising. Um, team fundraising um, just allows you to create um, more competition uh, among your supporters. So um, let's say you wanted to um, really get your board involved. Um, uh, you know, if they didn't particularly, let's say they were like, mm, we don't really want to provide a match, they could set up a team. So your board members could compete among each other to see who could raise the most money for your nonprofit on Give Local Piedmont. Um, and, you know, just setting up these teams, this functionality is all available to you within um, your Give Local Piedmont account. And um, it, it just provides a new and kind of different way for your board um, to get involved. And it doesn't have to be your board, but just an example. Um, and uh, it allows your supporters to kind of take that additional step um, to fundraise for your nonprofit. And of course, all the funds that flow through these pages flow up into your organization page which flows up into you know what you raise for give local Piedmont. So um, in these next few slides, um, I'm going to be going through different messaging strategies to have leading up to and during give local Piedmont. Um, the first messaging strategy that I want to tackle is offline messaging. Um, so basically offline messaging is going to be any communication that you mail out about the giving day that's not through your usual uh, online methods like email. So if any of you send um, you know, out a newsletter, be sure to include information about Give Local Piedmont. You know, make it a prominent part of your mailing. Don't be shy about printing the link to your online page, but um, you know, also be sure to include instructions on how to mail in checks for those donors who prefer to give uh, offline. Um, postcards are also a great way to send, um, to quickly send out information about your campaign. Um, so if you're able to mass mail out dedicated postcards to all your supporters about the giving day, um, that's a really great offline item to accompany any online messaging that you have. Um, a lot of times too, uh, handwritten notes um, are, you know, used, you know, once in the giving day to thank your donors. Um, but they're also a really great, super personal way to get out the word out to um, a select group of supporters. So, you know, your major donors, your board are probably some good groups to get a handwritten note prior to the giving day. 
Um, along with handwritten notes, uh, you can you know, make personal phone calls as part of your appeal strategy too. Um, so not only do phone calls allow you to make sure that the supporter is hearing your message directly, but you know they also are a great, great way to uh, build that relationships, which obviously only helps you in the long run. Um, I, you know, depending on your staff size um, or you know your lack of staff size, um, you may need to be strategic when it comes to making personal phone calls or you know writing those handwritten notes. Um, if you're small and only have the bandwidth for a few calls or a few notes, um, make sure that you send it to key people like major donors and your board. Um, focus on on those groups of people. Uh, if you're larger and you're able to secure some volunteers to make phone calls during the giving day or leading up to the giving day, that's awesome. Um, you'll definitely want to make sure that you include that in your overall strategy. Um, and then, of course, if you have the budget, um, you can also get, you know, yard signs or decals made uh, to promote your nonprofit on the giving day. Um, some of those little things like um, stickers, magnets, those would be really fun to include in, you know, a newsletter mailing or handwritten note um, to thank a donor in advance for giving, uh, you know, I like to sometimes take a note out of, um, you know, wedding save the dates. A lot of, at least a lot of people that I get wedding save the dates for send out magnets to say save the date. Um, and then you never forget because um, it's always on your fridge. So magnets are a great way for you to kind of, you know, send those along with your newsletter so that you can stick them on your fridge and know exactly when the Give Local Piedmont Giving Day is. Um, plus, it's very convenient because then they can hang things up on their fridge with them. We, um, we, we have the uh, first printing done of postcards and magnets, and you're going to see an announcement from Dawn on your GLP page, and you're also going to see a constant contact from me today asking you to get in touch with us about your needs for postcards and magnets. Yard signs are coming. Um, we place a lot of them ourselves, Northern Piedmont, but then we also like to hear from you, those of you that are used to placing yard signs strategically, either in front of your organization, in your neighborhood, um, but we'll be giving you, you'll hear details from us about that today, and you'll hear details about yard signs in the next week or two. Perfect. Um, so obviously, since you know, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation is providing some postcards, um, yard signs, et cetera, for everyone, then that's a great way to kind of incorporate that into your overall strategy and how you're going to be um, communicating with your donors uh, to let them know that the giving day is coming, when early giving starts, um, and you know how to donate. Um, so, uh, Lastly, you'll want to make sure that you plan out your schedule and timing for any, you know, offline messaging that you're doing. Um, unlike, you know, email and social media, offline messaging takes longer to get to its destination. So you'll want to make sure that you're sending things out in a timely manner, um, depending on what, you know, phase we are in uh, for the Give Local Piedmont schedule. Um, so email is going to be one of your uh, most important tools during Give Local Piedmont um, because, you know, emails are also a direct line to your supporters. Um, unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in the way or preventing people from seeing what you send them. Um, because unless they've unsubscribed from your emails, it'll end up right in their inbox, probably will send them a notification on their phone. Um, so I want to talk for a little bit about email strategy because that's going to be super important for Give Local Piedmont. Um, in general, you'll want to keep your emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Um, most people read their emails uh, on their phones these days. So, you know, and even if they don't um, read their emails on their phones and they read them on their desktop, you're not going to want, you know, to send them a novel. Um, you, you want them to be able to skim and get right to the point. Um, so people are also much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them. So we highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. You know, donors who've given a lot or who give on a regular basis, one-time donors, uh, people who have utilized your services but never donated, um, your board, volunteers, etc. Um, so you don't need to craft entirely new emails for each of these groups, but you can tweak small things about the emails for each group to make it more personal. So, for instance, in an email to volunteers, you'll want to acknowledge how they already help your organization. Um, and then another thing to think about, you know, you wouldn't want to send an email to a major gift donor asking for just a $25 donation. 
Um, identify your key segments, figure out how to tailor your message to them. Um, when an email is tailored to who the recipient is and the relationship that they have with your organization, they are much more likely to read it and take action on it. Um, and then, of course, you know how you segment depends on the program you're using. Um, but most services, like Constant Contact and Mailchimp, they use tags to segment groups of people on your email list. Uh, and then one thing that you'll um, need to pay close attention to is the timing of your emails. So I would recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand and having a template email ready uh, for the things that you need to send out on the day of. Um, like a blast email asking people to help you uh, get to your campaign goal, an announcement that you want to prize. Those are all timely emails that you'll want to have templates ready. Um, and that way you can send them off quickly the day of. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you know, most people read their email on their phones. Um, so make sure you choose a mobile friendly email template, test it out beforehand, look at it on the desktop, look at it on an iPhone, Android, et cetera. Make sure it looks the way that you want it to look. Um, and then if you have time and are able to leading up to the event, um, we also recommend doing some A-B testing, um, especially with the subject lines, because you'll want to make sure that people are driven to actually open your emails for Give Local Piedmont. Um, so, you know, try out different subject line formats, try adding things like emojis, see what works better. Um, you know, when you're sending out those emails, um, that way you'll have an idea of, you know, what works best with your email list. Um, so A-B testing, if you're new to that term, is basically splitting up an email 50-50 and testing a variable. So, you know, testing a button color, testing a subject line. So half your email list gets email A with one subject line, half gets email B with another, and then basically whichever emails gets the most opens wins. Um, so, you know, for button color replacement, the email with the most clicks would win. Um, and you want to be careful about testing too much, throwing too many variables in there. Uh, because then you know it'd be really hard to say exactly why something performed the way that it did uh, and then lastly with this um, your call to action should be clear and action oriented uh, give now donate now help us today uh, more passive calls to action like thanks for donating or please contribute just aren't as effective so you'll want to be crystal clear and urgent when you're creating your emails um, and you know sending them out to donors so um, for a high stakes day like Give Local Piedmont, um, for social media, definitely stay within your comfort zone. Um, so if you primarily use Facebook um, or Instagram, go ahead and just use those. You don't need to like think about something new to use um, if you've never used a certain social media platform. Go where your followers are, um, you know, hang out on Facebook um, if that's where you know people are checking you out. Um, and definitely schedule things ahead of time. Um, so if you're able to schedule uh, your Facebook posts, um, there's several programs that allow you to do that, then that's great. Um, or just get yourself some templates, uh, you know, get a Google Doc or, you know, a paper, uh, write down some templates um, that you want to use for day of. That way, you know, when you're announcing things, when you hit your campaign goal, again, if you win a prize, you have some uh, templates available and can just send them off really quick. Uh, post really quickly on um, Facebook or Instagram, wherever you're uh, deciding to um, to go that day. Um, you'll also want to assign a point person um, to you know monitor social media um, so that you can quickly respond to any comments and interact with your followers, since you know that's really important on social media. Um, and it definitely, when you have a lot of engagement, it helps um, kind of boost your uh, posts to a wider audience as well. Uh, and then if you do have a small budget, uh, we do recommend um, uh, boosting your posts uh, monetarily, you know, promoting those tweets on social media, you know, $20 for an ad can go a long way. Um, you'll want to make sure that your ads targeted properly. Um, and if you're not sure how to target an ad, um, you can always default to, you know, just the people who like your page or already follow you. Um, and then, you know, in terms of content that does well on social media, it depends a little bit on the platform, but in general, photos and videos do really well. Um, and you may want to consider doing something out of the box, like, you know, a Facebook Live video, a live watch party, um, et cetera, to, you know, kind of generate that buzz, get that engagement going. Um, that'll just bump you up on um, everyone's news feeds. So very quickly here. Um, as you're planning your campaign, follow-up is really important to consider. Um, you'll want to plan to thank your donors 
things like, you know, making a video, a photo of your staff can be really great for this. Be sure to talk about, you know, the impact that the funds you raise, cl basically close the loop on your campaigns. So if you know, if you are fundraising for something specific, like a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something, you'll want to send out emails periodically on your progress. Um, and then, of course, if you do get any new donors, which, you know, hopefully you get lots, um, you'll want to make sure you have an onboarding plan in place for those new donors so that they come back to donate again. Um, you know, if you collect email, if you collect, you know, regular addresses, mailing them a welcome packet can get, be a great way to get them onboarded, um, creating an automated email journey for them. Um, basically, take the time to also plan, you know, what you'll do with them after the giving day as well. So we are out of time. Um, basically, all that was all the strategy stuff that I have. We do. I did have some slides on the check and offline donation policy. We went through those in the first webinar. It's also online on givelocalpiedmont.org under resources. So if you want to refresh yourself on the check or offline donation policy, just go to givelocalpiedmont.org, or you know you can email Didi. You can email our support team, and we'll be happy to um, you know help you uh, figure that out as well. Um, here's our support information. Again, there's a contact us uh, tab on the on givelocalpiedmont.org with all this information as well. Um, so if you need help, you're not sure who to ask, go to that contact us on givelocalpiedmont.org and all the information will be there too. So obviously we didn't get to any questions, but um, I have a record of all of them. So we will be emailing anyone that asks questions um, after. Uh, so hopefully later today, I'll be able to get to all of them. Um, if there's any, if I see a pattern with any, um, then I'll be sure to make sure that there's a question included in the FAQ on the GiveLocalPiedmont.org site. That way um, you all have visibility into the other questions that were asked. Um, and I definitely apologize um, for running over. Hopefully, you know, it was all, you know, in good, uh, you know, form since we provided lots of, um, you know, different ideas for uh, content and strategy for you to utilize during the Give Local Piedmont campaign. Um, and, but again, and we also have next week. Let's not forget because that's an open-ended questions, all questions. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. Um, and if you're not sure what next week is, um, there is a basically open office hour. Um, you can go to the contact us tab and submit a question if you have one, um, and then we'll be we'll be happy to answer it in that um, office hours uh, hour essentially. Yeah, um, that's being set up as a Zoom call. Yep. Yep. Um, but thanks again, everyone. Um, again, I apologize for not getting to um, any questions. And um, but Dee Dee, if you have any last last minute words you nope. want to, that's it. Nope. You know how okay, to find us. All. Yeah, thank you all so much for taking the time um, to uh, review the webinar. Um, good luck this year. If you have any questions at all um, that you think of later, support at mightycost.com. Um, we are always happy to help we're here to um you know we're here for you so have a great day um enjoy your the rest of your wednesday happy st patrick's day Woo, yeah <laughs> uh and um we will we, uh be here for you and um that's it have a great day we're done thanks to all <laughs>